you like the smoky taste of smoked fish and smoked meats, but you don't want all the sodium that's in smoked salmon, try this recipe. We're using wild Alaskan salmon here. You could use sockeye, silver, coho, or king salmon if you want to be a little bit spendy. What you need for this recipe is one and a half to one and three quarter pounds of wild Alaskan salmon. We have silver salmon here today. And I've cut it in pieces about two inches wide, so they're nice single serving portions. You'll also need one to two bay leaves. You'll need one half to one cup of filtered water. You'll need a teaspoon of dry mustard. Double it if desired. You'll need one third to one half teaspoon ground chipotle, which is smoke dried jalapeno pepper powder. You can find it in supermarkets, natural food stores, or on the ethnic aisle of supermarkets or in your favorite herb shop. You'll need one to two tablespoons of tamari soy sauce or one half to one teaspoon of unrefined mineral rich sea salt. You'll need one and a half teaspoons of a natural liquid hickory smoke seasoning. If you love that smoky taste, feel free to double it and use a tablespoon. My favorite brand of liquid hickory smoke seasoning is Wright's. You'll find it in most supermarkets on the aisle next to the barbecue sauces and other ingredients like that. Occasionally you'll find it in natural food stores. This one is a particularly good brand because it doesn't have chemical names and numbers in it. It has really simple ingredients. So let's get started. First what you want is about a quarter of an inch of water in the bottom of the pan. Depending on how large your pan is, the amount of water you need can vary slightly. The next thing you want to do is add your bay leaves. Next, the dry mustard. Next, the ground chipotle. Next, tamari soy sauce or sea salt. Next in is your liquid hickory smoke seasoning. Give the mixture a stir. Now what we'll do is add the fish. If you're using fish fillets rather than steaks, I recommend you put the fish skin side up so that when you turn it part way through, it will look much more pretty on the plate. So add the fish to the pan. Make sure that you avoid overlapping the pieces. Spread them evenly across the pan. If possible, use a 12 to 14 inch skillet. If you don't have something that large, you might need to divide the ingredients between two 8 inch skillets. So the fish has a little bit of room surrounding each piece. The next step is to cover the pot, bring it to boil, and then turn the heat to medium low. You want to simmer with some bubbles across the surface, but you don't want it boiling away, making a lot of noise. If it's boiling too hard, what can happen is it can make the fish break up. So be clear, once it comes to boil, turn the heat to medium or medium low so you've got active bubbles across the surface. While you're waiting for the fish to come to boil, you can clear away that spoon, spatula, and platter, and then have a clean platter ready so that once the fish is done, you'll be able to transfer it to a platter and then cook down the juices so they're reduced to about a quarter of a cup. Then we'll spoon them over the fish and it'll be ready to serve. So let's check on the fish. After about four or five minutes, you'll want to turn the fish and you can use tongs or a spatula or a combination of the two. Make sure you have an appropriate size spatula. You don't want anything too big and you want to minimize tearing the fish as you turn it. You can tell when the fish is pretty much done because it starts to turn white around the edges and some of the protein congeals. What you can do is you can turn with a fork to test one of the pieces. That needs a few more minutes. What you're looking for when the fish is almost done, turn it and see if it flakes apart easily. This is just about done. You want to take it out of the pan when it's still a little bit rare inside because the fish will actually keep cooking a little bit even after you take it off the heat. So I'm going to scoop the fish out and onto a platter. Drip the extra liquid back into the pan. And I recommend using a larger platter than you think you need so there's a little bit of space between the fish so that each piece 
looks distinct, and you have plenty of room for garnishing as well. Take out the bay leaves, you'll want to toss those. Now you can raise the heat and boil down the juices until they're reduced to about a quarter of a cup. When the pan juices have boiled down to a quarter cup or maybe a few tablespoons and they're really thick, you can turn off the heat and then spoon the sauce over the fish. Add a little chopped parsley to garnish. Or if you prefer, you can use cilantro or even chopped green onion. Now it's ready to serve. You can serve it with some sauteed twice cooked greens or some other colorful vegetable dish. Now you're ready to eat.